I've played Final Fantasy XIV for nearly a month now, and I checked my playtime the other day, and it was over 10 days, which is like 250 hours. So you could say I'm hooked. <laughs> I hope you're still enjoying this journey. I'm absolutely loving the game, loving making these videos. So let's get straight in to part 17. Welcome everybody to part 17. Whenever I record these videos, I always go over the last few days of uh, recordings to try and recap on what we've done. And I slipped back a little further today and looked at some of the older stuff and kind of looked at how far we've come. And I realized I've played this for over 250 hours and I haven't even finished ARR. I haven't even got to Heavensward yet. I mean, we're close and you'll see that in this video. We are making some real progress on the MSQ. But to think we've spent a month and all those hours and we're still in what some people call you know, the early game, the start of the game, um, the worst part of the game, some people call it. I don't know. I'm having fun. I'm loving the game. If it only gets better, I don't even know what to expect. So thank you all for being with me on this journey. It's been incredible. I can't wait to see what's next. So with that out of the way, let's get straight into part 17. As always, we're quite far into ARR now, so do expect spoilers. Here's your spoiler warning going forward from here. So in one of my last videos, I was really proud that I unlocked one of the beast tribes and I told everyone that I'd unlocked the kobolds and I was uh, I was pretty happy that I'd finally found them. And people were saying, you ain't even scratched the surface, man. <laughs> they said there's loads of beast tribes and they take weeks to months to finish. So I went around and unlocked every single beast tribe and made it my mission to knock at, knock at least 12 out a day where possible. When I, you know, if I was playing it, I'd make sure to do 12 just so I could at least start scratching the surface of that whole Thing. I don't know what you get for them. I don't know what I should be doing. Like, is there a certain one I should be going for if I'm playing a certain class, or is it just like cosmetics? If there's a certain one that I should focus on first or something, let me know. But so far, I've just been uh, unlocking them and going through the dailies every day. I won't show them all, but my favorite so far are these guys in Thanalan and the fish people. I don't know why, but those two are my favorite. I don't know the aesthetic of the characters and the story is definitely my my favorite. Um, out of all the beast tribes, my least favorite beast tribe is probably the sylph, the, the cabbage people, <laughs> the sylph, sylphs. Um, I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know why. I just don't like them. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, the beast tribes are really cool. I think so from World of Warcraft, dailies are a massive part of the game, but dailies are just dailies. You just do dailies every day in everything you do. Uh, but these dailies are actually tied to the story and you progress the story when you hit a new relationship you get more story and i don't know i think they do them better here i've got no idea how it works later in the game because apparently beast tribes are in all the expansions or they are in later expansions um which is why i want to get started on the arr one so early because i don't want to have like 10 different beast tribe factions to worry about um, but yeah these are definitely my favorites so far these amal amalgia people i really like these how epic is that oh i love it <laughs> The only beast tribe I really don't understand is the Eaxi, Axel, those, the 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 crafting people. I really don't get it. I don't understand. So you put you put these gloves on, and then you go and I was a cook and I was cooking, but I was creating a spaceship. I was creating a a a, a ship, an airship. I really don't understand. I got a big chunk of experience for crafting but I was cooking. I really, really don't get it. If anyone could explain what the hell this faction is and does, I'd really appreciate it. Because <laughs> I did it once and I unlocked them and I haven't touched them since because I just don't want to, I don't get it. Thanks. <laughs> and then a while ago, I tried the blue mage and I really didn't like it. I couldn't get, I couldn't get used to it. I didn't like the whole style. So I kind of put off the red mage. And then people were saying, you know, the red mage, the blue mage is a bit of a meme. Red mage is actually a really good and solid class. So I tried it. And holy crap, I really like the Red Mage. It's so fun. I really am a huge fan. And I, I, I keep having to stop myself because I keep like, oh, no, no, I need to play my Dragoon. But then I'll slip away and I'll be like, oh, I'll do my dailies on the Red Mage. I'll just do this quest on the Red Mage. It's such a fun play style. You like do a, uh, you do like this build up of like single target or uh, AOE and it's like light and dark magic. And then when you cap out, you bust in with the Zoro combo. It, it's really, really a cool and a stylish class. I'm a big fan. So yeah, I've been playing a bit of Red Mage on the side and I actually really like it. There's not many classes in the game I don't like, um, but some have just such fun play styles and Red Mage is definitely one of them. 
And then out of nowhere, the stories got really good. <laughs> so after after 2.0, the story had a big lull. And then, yeah, just out of nowhere, it just got really good in like 2.1, 2.2. So we're actually making a lot of progress on the MSQ. Starting to see a lot more of the Scions, starting to see a lot more of their character. Um, so sick. Like, Thancred's coming to his own. Yuguri's being really cool. Um... Just everyone's starting to grow more as a character, and I really, really, I've been playing more and more of the story because it's getting so good. And then the fisherman went out to sea to get a big catch. It was time to fight the big fish monster. This was sick. This was a really, really cool primal fight. I, I still to this day say that the primal, uh, the primal trials are some of the best parts of this game so far. I've played. Um, I love them. I think they're so unique. They're so powerful, and they're so well built into the story. I really, really appreciate them. And every time I unlock a new one, I get so excited. And this, this was, this was on par. This was again a, a solid fight. This was the Leviathan fight, and yeah, absolutely awesome and unique and fun. And of course, the music was banging. <laughs> So yeah, this fight was really cool. Um, one of the big things here is I always go into these blinds and I never know the mechanics and that did kind of punish me. So like, you get tossed from like left to right of the ship and then there's like these, uh, the tail comes on one side and like, these other things come over and then their head is here. And I was attacking just random things. And then someone, I was streaming this live on Twitch. I do all of this on Twitch. So if you ever want to come watch the story or any, of, any other part of the game live, that's the best place to do it. I'll link my Twitch down below. We're having some great fun over there. But someone in the Twitch stream said, yo, you're not attacking him. So apparently there's like magic attacks only hurt the head and then like physical attacks only hurt the, the tail or something like that. So I was attacking the tail for ages and I was like, I was either healing him or reflecting damage on myself. I was doing something that was very bad. Um, and of course I got hit by all of the attacks. <laughs> um, but yeah, by the end of the fight, when he was down to like 20%, I got the hang of it. I think, maybe. I hadn't, I hadn't got the hang of it at all. But yeah, it was a really cool fight. And what I really want to do is go back and do all these on extreme and really learn the mechanics. Because it's not like you're getting carried, but because everyone else knows what to do, if I mess up, um, you, you can still get through it. So it's not like you, you mess up, learn, go again. So I kind of want to do these on extreme where, they, where you can't fail. So that when I, if I do mess up something, we're going to fail and I'm going to learn it again. So yeah, I really do want to do these again because the trials are just so good in this game. And then I went fishing, but not just any fishing, sky fishing or cliff fishing. This is so cool. So in one of my last videos, I showed uh, sand fishing where you can like fish into these big sand pits. And now you can just fish into the sky. You can get like sky fish and like um, these just floating fish. Really cool, really cool idea. I'm, ob I'm obviously obsessed with fishing. So this was super, super fun. And then after sky fishing, you get a quest where they learn you how to do a thing called double mooch. So what you do is you catch a high quality fish, you then put that fish on your line as bait and throw it back in to catch a bigger fish. And then the double mooch is that second fish you catch that's bigger. If it, you then put it back on your line and you go in again to get a giant fish. And this took a lot of time, but here's me finally finishing it. So this was the double mooch in Costa del Sol. Um, this is so cool. It takes a while to do, but I finally did it and I got this giant marlin and it felt so cool. I was here for a while to be honest, but yeah, I finally got to pull the double mooch off and that was kind of the end of the level 50 quest. So this was so fun. And then you get this epic cutscene with Slafferson, uh, the big the big boy from Limsa where you show off your giant marlin catch. Um, and you've kind of proven yourself here as like a master fisherman. And that you you have the you have what it takes to catch these huge fish. It was a really cool quest. It was a really cool ending, but unfortunately, there was some sadness to it because there's no more fishing quests until I progress the MSQ. I think the next fishing quest is like in some level 55 zone, and I'm not I've not unlocked it. So I can't fish. I can fish, but I can't do any more quests. So yeah, now we've got to progress the MSQ, I guess. <laughs> but we did get a very cool fishing hat for getting to level 50. Another thing I did was I made a macro for all my jobs. So you can see I've got all my jobs on a separate little window, which is macro to open and close, uh, so that they don't they don't clog up the uh, they don't clog up the main hood. So yeah, shout out to Zeppler because her video was super helpful for that. And yeah, no more fishing until Heaven's Ward, maybe. Nah, we're gonna fish. <laughs>
And then every two hours in the Golden Saucer, you have this uh, triple triad tournament, open tournament every two hours. And I won my first ever tournament. My cards are weak, my skills are weak, but eventually I went into one of these drafts and managed to pull off a win. Um, so yeah, this was the first time after doing these for, for a long, I've, I've lost a lot of these. Um, and you get two packs of golden triple triad pack cards. So yeah, go to open those and get some cool cards. So we're finally making some progress on triple triad. Um, there's so much side content in the game. I don't know how people get anything done. <laughs> and then I mentioned in the last one that we managed to get a house. So I camped the houses for a couple of days, but managed to get lucky just clicking one of the placards at random and managed to get one. So yeah, complete fluke on this, but we got one and it was time to decorate. And what better way to decorate the house than with fish tanks. So we're making it an aquarium. I've got a little stand on the right. The cat girls are always welcome here. Um, <laughs> so we're making the, uh, the the cat girl aquarium, which is looking pretty good so far. Thank you so much for everyone that's given some, uh, some of the items for the house. I, I could not have afforded half of this stuff. So thank you everyone for helping out, chipping in. It's been so, so nice to do this. And then we've got a big bed down there. So bed music this is just going to be like an underground aquarium for us cats to chill out <laughs> i really like the look of it and then we've put like loads of little tonbury minion lamps as well um all the way along which looks super cool when the lights are off and then with like the aquarium down in, in the basement i wanted to make like a like a gambling den on the top so the top is going to be like my own mini golden saucer so we've got the triple triad table here and when the Make It Rain event comes in, I'm going to spend quite a lot of time in the Golden Saucer to try and get some of those little machines to try and have those here as well. So yeah, that's the plan for the house. I'm really, really enjoying housing. It seems so fun. So here's a final look at the uh, the aquarium. So we've got the Tonbury lamps lighting up the room with the big backdrop. And then we've got a little, uh, a little cat girl stand on the right, <laughs> which is super fun. Uh, the big TV. And yeah, I kind of really like the look of this. I want to fill it. I'm going to fill this with fish, uh, obviously from our fishing adventures. But this is kind of a base of what I want it to look like. And I'm really happy with it so far. Again, thank you everyone for helping out. And here it is almost completed with uh, with the fish as well. So yeah, this is what I really want it to look like. And I'm really happy with it so far. I think housing is something I really appreciate and it's something I always wanted in World of Warcraft and everybody in WoW has always wanted player housing. It's just so nice to have a place to just chill out with your friends and just relax and just like your own little instanced area that you can just make your own. I, I'm such a huge fan. As soon as I got the ability to unlock housing, it's all I wanted and yeah, I, I really, really like it. But that did not stop us from progressing the MSQ. 2.2 or 2.3 and we got introduced to Beard Daddy, the big old Thunderman. Um, this was epic. This was super, super epic. And it was pretty hard. It was a pretty hard fight. Um, there's a few mechanics here that I didn't really understand at first. And uh, yeah, I got I got slapped pretty hard. I died. I, we, I think we wiped on this once, actually. We just got completely taken over by the electric. Um, this I, I imagine this is going to be pretty horrible on, on extreme. Because I think this starts out as a hard, yeah, hard mode, and it, it, it was hard. <laughs> yeah, this is a great fight. This really was a cool fight. Again, completely unique to all the other primal fights. Super fun, and uh, yeah, I wasn't just doing nothing here. I think I was stunned. And then yeah, eventually, we kind of understood the mechanics, got the idea of how to play the game, got, got got a good understanding, and we did the fight. So yeah, here it is. We finally beat uh, Ra Ramu, Ramo, Rama, Ramu. The big, the big Thunderman, big bearded Thunderman. Um, really, really good fight. Really, really cool. I think like it, it was different how he was introduced as well. He wasn't like some big evil primal that wanted to take over the world. He was a protector of the sylphs, and you had to challenge him to show that you were good enough in combat. And yeah, really interesting way of doing it. It was cool. He was probably the most, most human and most uh, relatable primal we've faced so far. So uh, yeah, I really did like this fight. Really, really cool. And I'm not just doing the MSQ because everyone's doubting me and saying, you'll never finish ARR. I'm doing it because I want to unlock fishing in Heaven's Ward. <laughs> and then I've not included much story uh, post 2.0 because it's it's very story heavy. There's like two to three hours of story between every trial and it's mostly reading and talking. There's no like big epic cutscenes. But this one really stood out. This was really cool. Um, so Minfilia kind of explains how the, uh, the Asians work and how their power works. And that their souls are, they travel between the real world and they travel to the end world. They travel from like the real world to like a pool of souls. 
and then when someone dies, they're reborn with a soul. But the the Asians are different. They can take their soul to like middle plane, which is why they don't die, and that's why that you couldn't kill、uh, La Habrea. So the whole plan now is to find a way to trap and permanently kill. The Asian soul, which is really, really cool. I really like that. It gives me vibes of like Kingdom Hearts or like like really old、J、JRPG games, like the big, cool stories where you've got something that's like a you're trying to basically take down a god. And I really, really can get behind that sort of story. So yeah, it's really picking up for me here. I'm really enjoying it. And then now I've got a home. People told me that I can place a chocobo stable. And start upgrading my chocobo, like leveling it up maybe, and then changing the color of it. So that's something I really, really wanted to try. Ignore the Christmas tree. I don't know why I put the Christmas tree there.、Um, I kind of like it though. <laughs>、um, so yeah, somebody basically sent me this big guide and said feed it all of this stuff in this order, and it will change color. I don't know how to level it up and stuff. I don't really get that. But I, I did have a go at feeding it to change its color, so you can change its plumage to be. A completely different color, and obviously I wanted to get it jet black because kind of I'm, I think I feel like an edgy guy maybe. <laughs> so here we go, turning the chocobo into a black plumage, jet black plumage chocobo. Cue the epic feeding montage of fifty fruits and berries. So let's go try our lovely jet black, amazing affected chocobo, and it's blue. <laughs> it's not black. It's not black. Not even a little bit. It's blue. It's blue. And it's blue. That's all I know. It's blue. It's blue.、Uh, it kind of looks cool, but yeah. So so yeah, feeding the chocobo and turning the plumage a different color is not an easy task. And if you're an idiot, you will mess it up like me. You have to like alternate the different foods, so you have to like, alternate like berry pear, berry pear. Obviously, I made a giant mistake. I I don't know what happened. I can only blame myself.、Uh, but here we are. We are now the proud owner of a midnight blue chocobo, <laughs> whether we like it or not. <laughs> I'm probably going to wrap this one up here, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, the next one will be out in three to four days, as usual.、Uh, I'm putting in a little bit of different videos here and there as well, just to try and keep things fresh and just to keep myself sane because it is hard getting these out like every day. So I have been spreading them out a little bit more. I hope that's not too much of a problem.、Um, if you do find yourself itching for more content, I have been streaming this three to four days a week on Twitch, and you, that's where most of this content's come from. I've recorded it on Twitch. So if you want to come watch live, I will link that down below. I would love to see you over there. If you want to join our Discord, there's like a thousand people in there now, which is nuts.、Uh, Do you get it? Because we've got a nut kid on our shoulder. <laughs> yeah, I want to end it here. I want to end it here. Also, if you're not subscribed,、um, please subscribe. Thanks. <laughs> Cheers. Take care, and I'll catch you in the next one.